right, another woo, nice long one for Alicia. Yes. And it's ICD-10 subsequent acute myocardial infarction. This example she's saying comes from the AAPC quick reference. I want to know why we need two codes. Is the only is this only an ICD-10 rule? A patient suffers from an acute MI of the inferior wall two weeks after suffering an acute MI of the left anterior descending coronary artery. He's admitted for a new MI which is I22.1 subsequent ST elevation, that's a STEMI, uh, MI of inferior wall, and then uh, I21.02 uh, ST elevation, that's a STEMI also, MI of left anterior descending coronary artery. In this example, the second MI occurs four weeks uh, after the first, so we it is within the four weeks of the first and is a subsequent MI coded from the category I22. The patient is admitted for the new MI, so the subsequent MI is the first listed code followed by the initial MI. So as she's opening up that um, answer sheet, what I wanted to, you know, I had to read this a couple times like, oh, I get it, I get, I, I understand what they're, um, they're asking, is um, the, you know, they, they have the, the heart attack, a specific, and, and in ICD-10 now, you can actually tell and code where it is located at, which is wonderful. Uh, but uh, then they have a subsequent one, which is pretty common uh, if, you, if you have a heart attack to follow up and have another heart attack. Uh, and the guidelines have changed from 9 to 10. Now, you know how we tell, uh, and you may have heard me say this several times, pretty much the guidelines between 9 and 10 are the same. And predominantly across the board, they are. But there are some significant changes, and this is one of them. <clears throat> okay, so if you happen to have your manual, you're going to go to Chapter 9, <clears throat> That's diseases of the circulatory system, E, and then 1. So we're talking about subsequent MIs. So when we're coding an acute MI, these are the bullet points. This is what you need to know about an acute MI. You've got to identify the site with ICD-10. You need to know if it's at the ST elevation. Is it a STEMI or a non-STEMI? And we did another uh, webinar on what is the difference between a STEMI and a non-STEMI. You can go out to YouTube and find that on our uh, medical coding cert because um, that's pretty interesting. So if though they need to know if it's a non-STEMI and it evolves into a STEMI, then you assign the STEMI, that's a, a guideline, and that's the same in ICD-9. And then uh, if a STEMI converts to a non-STEMI due to the fact that they give them a thromboletic therapy uh, where they thin the blood out, then you're going to code still the STEMI, and that has not changed, okay? Now, if the encounter occurs while or uh, it, and so it says equal or less than four weeks. Now, heads up, this used to be eight weeks. ICD-9 is eight weeks, and they shortened it to four weeks. That is a guideline change, significant. Then uh, include, and this includes transfer to another acute setting or post-acute setting, and the patient requires continued care for the MI code. Uh, from what you're going to do is you're going to code from the I21, and you're going to keep that continuing in the report. All right, so encounter occurs greater than four weeks, you are going to uh, use an aftercare code versus the I21. Okay, those guidelines, the only thing that really changed in that is the four weeks, all right, and the fact that you're going to continue to code for the uh, initial MI. Okay, now why is this important? Uh, you know, why would you need to? codes. Well, the initial MI in ICD-10 tells the location of the MI. Is it an interior wall? Is it, you know, the inferior wall? Why do they need to know that? Well, if they're going to do a cabbage, uh, if they do one on, and forgive me, I don't remember if it's the anterior or the uh, exterior. I can show you when I look at a heart, but where the aorta comes down and arches, and I got a picture at the bottom of this, then um, they will often take a graft vein from the leg, plug it into the aorta, and down to 
where they need to bypass. Okay, and that's an example of it right there. All right. So if it's that particular part, then that's how they bypass. However, if they bypass, I didn't put another picture up there. If this uh, this blockage is over there, uh, would be on the other side of the heart. They don't do that. They take a mammary uh, vein that's right there and goes across the chest, and they plug it in. They don't graft from someplace else and pull a vein. Um, they actually take an existing one that's right there in the area and and um, connect it. And so that's two different ways to, to do it. Uh, again, if you're going to take a graft from the leg, that's additional procedure, so on and so forth. Now, why also do they want to know this? We are coding for statistical purposes. We forget that. And uh, it just happens to be a convenient way to get paid. So statistically, they can tell if a person has had a bypass surgery of the anterior wall and this procedure worked, then they would be able to tell the recovery weight and what happened after for that patient versus um, taking like the other one that a mammary, you know, now they know, well, this mammary vessel works so much better uh, in this area versus the bypass from the aorta and so on and so forth. They know that because of statistics. Now with ICD-10, they can actually get more information because of where the um, infarction is located. So it's huge, the information you can attain from these codes. Location is very important then. Now, why would it be important to know what type of initial MI happened uh, if within four weeks of the second one? It's all about the statistics, guys. You know, we can improve the treatment uh, by knowing all of this information. So you do need two codes. So going in also, just keep in mind, in ICD-10, the MSDRGs remain the same for the initial MI or a subsequent one, just threw that in there. And you uh, confirm an initial MI date in the documentation. Sometimes it's not there. So this is something that as coders and as experts, we will help our um, providers uh, and clinicians to understand this is documentation, a date that's incredibly important to the continuing of care for our patient in the coding and the billing. You know, this also changes the way the money comes in because an old MI after four weeks doesn't carry an HCC for risk adjustment anymore. So again, they won't get paid for that treatment. And, and so it's very important. So I, I just copied there the, the codes that we were talking about, and you can find them in your coding manual. But uh, And then the, the picture of uh, that one particular bypass and how they do that. And so again, very exciting. Yes, the guidelines have changed around this. And yes, you do need two codes. And that's why um, going forward, you will need two codes in that situation. It's very exciting yeah. stuff. You do get so excited. <laughs> so I don't think I can talk as fast as Joanne, though. Do you need more medical certification training? Go to www.cco.us. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates.